Welcome to Tech Notice. So you just got yourself a Mac Mini and you can't wait to get started to create videos or get your work done because the chip is working great and it's really fast but you realized I kind of need a few accessories to get started. Now maybe you do have these accessories but in this video I would like to show you some of the best accessories I have found for this Mac Mini and some of the things that really give you some really good expandability and you know some cheap options to get started and to save money. Let's do it. Artlist is an affordable way to license all the music you need for your projects. Whether it's personal, commercial, TV, podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, you get the point. You name it, it's covered. No more worrying if your music licensing covers your project. One worldwide license that covers it all. Oh, and that's not all. Artlist also includes tons of sound effects and the music is updated daily, so you never run out of choice. If you're wondering, how did I get all these nice shots of B-roll, well, it's called ArtGrid, a site similar to ArtList but for video. ArtGrid can provide all the stock footage you need from HD to 8K, profile formats, log or graded, to assure that it can be personalized and fitted to your current project. And ArtGrid works the same as ArtList, one worldwide license that covers it all. So it's simple, choose the license that you need and that fits your budget and enjoy the unlimited downloads without any extra cost added. Get two extra months for free when you join ArtGrid or ArtList through the links provided. Check out ArtList and ArtGrid in the video description below. So I do want to mention that everything I'm talking about, I'm going to leave a link in the description so it's easier for you to find. And also it is a, an affiliate link, which means that I will get a commission when you purchase this. So thank you very much. It's no extra cost to you, but it will help me keep this channel going. So thank you very much. So now let's jump into some of these accessories. Now, one of the main and best accessories I have found is this Mac mini dock over here, as you can see. So this dock over here doesn't just give you some expandability of a few more USB ports and SD card reader and the USB-C reader in the front but it also gives you the ability to add a 2.5 inch drive in there whether it, whether it's a hard drive or an SSD so if you do need just a lot of storage to go cheap then put a hard drive in but if you need it to be fast as well here are some of the recommendations you can go for getting some of the SSDs but just mark this price it is only $60 sorry $70 over here and I saw one of these on sale before for about 50 so definitely check out the link below because it's a fantastic price for something like that so now let's have a look at some of the SSDs I would recommend so we'll go for with like the, the most professional and most reliable and you make a decision which one you want to go for but Samsung SSDs this 860 EVO is like probably the most reliable most like professional you know Five years warranty it's absolutely fantastic so if you want to get that it is hundred dollars to get in there now personally I am using this T-Force or Team Group uh, SSD, one terabyte SSD, and I'm using this on my main rig. This is a fantastic drive, and I'm getting faster speeds than this Samsung SSD. And it looks like it is slightly even cheaper than this Samsung SSD, depending on the time you're watching this video, so feel free to check out the link in the description. Also, another like a budget option to go for is this WD or Western Digital Green SSD. As you can see, for one terabyte, you're paying $80 which is one of the best prices I could find and you can expect similar speeds on the drive so if you want to get something very budget and fast then this is a great option for you I put this in here as well because if you are looking to expand the storage but you already have some of the SSDs or hard drives and you're thinking how can I attach them to this Mac mini then by getting this little USB connector thing you can basically attach one side to your SSD or hard drive and then the other side to one of the USB ports in the back of the Mac mini or if you already have the dock in the front of the dock or it also uses a USB-C adapter that comes with it and look it's only $11 so whatever SSDs you have even maybe you're a PC user and you've got some in your PC already you can just attach them and then read them over here now keep going on the storage avenue there is an M.2 NVMe drive enclosures so if you need something really fast to uh, uh, you know get your project going or if you're doing video editing or things like that then there's enclosures like this over here that you can get for like $24 and you can attach a M.2 an M.2 drive inside over there this also comes with like thermal guards and pastes basically it will keep your M.2 drive cold but through USB-C or USB 
one Gen 2 spot, you can expand your M.2 storage. Now, I'm gonna give you a few options over here. I'm gonna leave the links in the description as well. So here's like a Team Group T-Create classic drive. It's a one terabyte M.2 PCIe drive. It's a 3.0 drive, PCI 3.0, but there's no point of going PCIe uh, Gen 4 drives with this enclosure because you're not, go not gonna get this connectivity through the USB-C, so there's no point doing that. But this is like another create a drive, very affordable, good speeds, designed for creators, fantastic company, reliable, get a good warranty as well, I would go with this. I'm using a lot of uh, Team Group products, so I love them, that's why I'm recommending them. Also, I found another cheap one over here, this is Western Digital, one terabyte one, and this is less than $100, as you can see, so if you wanna save a little bit more, you can go with this one, or there is a Crucial drive over there, even slightly cheaper than the Western Digital drive, this is P1 drive. It's slightly lower speeds over there, but it also depends like on the M.2 closure, because the, the closure might actually cap your speed. And then there is some really fast storage that you can get for Sabrent Rocket, which uh, I'm using a lot of Sabrent devices as well. And uh, this one you can get lock 3200 to 200, 2000 megabytes per second read and write speeds, which is absolutely fantastic drives. These are slightly like, more expensive than the previous drives but very fast and reliable speeds. And then this is like now quite a bit more expensive and it is very fast speeds on this as well. Obviously, if you wanna go with like Samsung drives, then you can get, I'm gonna leave some in the description as well if you wanna go with, with them. But in my opinion, you gotta pay quite a lot more for really not that much, but if that reliability and kind of peace of mind is important for you, I'll leave a link for you in the description. You do need a keyboard to mouse to get going on this because there's no nothing that comes with it it's not a laptop you know so one of the best options you can go for let me go with like some of the more expensive ones first and then we'll go more budget ones there is logitech mx keys over here that is a fantastic really reliable very professional very awesome keyboard uh, wireless as well so very good feel on this keyboard like pretty much as good as it can get without paying ridiculous price for a keyboard. It's about $90 or less than $90. Now you can also pair this with an MX Master 3 mouse over here and this is one of the best mice I have ever used. Um, I've been using the MX Master mouses for a long time. I've got one over here, this is generation one, but that eventually gave up, so I went with generation three. You can get generation one MX Master ones for $38, I think I found. So I'm gonna leave that in the description as well, but this is like probably one of the best mice you can get. There's a lot of different buttons that you can customize and different applications. Fantastic. Quickly moving back a step and talking about the keyboard and probably one of the best keyboards you can get is this Logitech Craft keyboard and you're thinking $170 for a keyboard. It's insane and I agree with you. It is quite insane but some people you know whatever they buy whatever so this might be for you. This is a fantastic keyboard because for one this reason there is this little knob on the top left of this keyboard allows you to customize that little knob to different things in different applications. So if you're using some of the creative applications, you might wanna get this one to kind of get another little dial to uh, customize your workflow to get faster, not going into settings and you know changing some of the things, but having another physical button that can change a lot of things as you can see there's like adobe creative clouds and you know powerpoint words and excel things you can use this for so if you want to check it out i'm going to leave the link in the description there are some really cheap keyboards that you can go for but i think there's some point that where you think it's kind of not worth it you know and if you want to go for something just look for the cheapest keyboard on on amazon kick on one of the links in the description you know and this just search keyboard and then just sort the search by just the cheapest option and you can find one of those there but often they're not worth it but one of these ones that kind of makes sense uh, i have over here this is 50 dollars for this keyboard and uh, as you can see you can save extra 20 percent when applying this keyboard so it probably 45 dollars then and it comes with white and silver or black and space gray type of thing so depending what kind of theme you go for you have the option both for the same price it's wireless it uses windows and mac op option keys or Windows and Mac, it works for both. But if you go with this Mac mini, as you can see, there is a command and option and control and function key layout over there, very well put in there. So it's kind of like a Mac keyboard, which is much better to use with this Mac mini. I have tried to use my Windows keyboard, to be honest, it's a little bit of a nightmare and getting used to. So if you're new and wanting like a good cheap 
keyboard, then this is a good option. I have used some jelly comb, what's it called? Jelly comb, yeah, uh, products before. They're quite all right and you know, very decent. You get a lot for your money, basically. It's very cheap, so I definitely recommend this one. Now, if you're looking for a cheap mouse, then this is one of the best mice you can get for that price. For then $10, and I saw this on sale just a few days ago for even half the price, it is ridiculous. I've got it over here, but over there, but it's in my drawer because I can't seem to find the receiver for this. It is not a Bluetooth mouse, so you do need a receiver for this. It has got the receiver in there, but I have lost mine. It's fantastic feel, fan just works really great and I have had no issues of, over the year that I've used this. Honestly, I don't think you can get much better for that type of price, so I'm going to leave a link in the description. Moving on to the monitor, right? You need some kind of visual thing to see what you are doing or what you're working with. And here are some of my kind of suggestions. There are some people who are like creators and want like a best bang for buck kind of creators monitor. And if you're looking for the video, I've got one on my channel, but if you don't want to watch this, um, I'm going to tell you the quick conclusion over here as well. So generally for creators, like overall best bang for buck kind of monitor with good color accuracy and they like the actual estate big as well quality, I would go with the BenQ PD 2700Q monitor, so it's 27 inch, it's a QHD resolution of so 1440p, 100% Adobe sRGB, so very color accurate and everything. It's not 4K screen, but it's very color accurate if you need that. And 27 inch gives you a lot of estate to work with, you wanna see your things big and you don't have to zoom in, and you can have a few windows even laid out on the screen, it's not that small. So you could get away with just one monitor and it's, you know, for professionals, for that price, I'm not sure you can get anything much better. That's honestly my opinion. And I'm coming from using the PD3200U monitor, which is over there, which is a 32 inch BenQ monitor from the same line. If you want the same monitor with 4K resolution, you're gonna start to have to pay a little bit an extra. This is like $500 now. It is honestly fantastic monitor for that price and the color accuracy, if that is what you're looking for, definitely worth checking out links in the description and this one is the one i am using if you need the 32 inch model this is pd 3200u i've been using it for a long time now and i have no issues with it definitely recommend but if you are on a desk and if you have a multicam setup i would go with two 27 inches for example instead of this one because when you go with this one it's really hard to see anything else it's a massive screen but now what about the more budget versions or people who are starting out and looking for something that they just want to get started and they're not really bothered about the you know color accuracy they just need work done so there's a few options that are found that are very affordable from different brands this is samsung this is a little bit curved as well if you're into that full hd 27 inch so it's not the best resolution but it is it is still very good you know there's a visa mount available as well in the back so if you want to mount it later on onto like a stand or something multi-monitor stand you can do that definitely as well well, there is the BenQ option over here. If you just want to go with BenQ, there's very small bezels on this one. This is slightly expensive than the Samsung one, but it is still 27 inch. It's an IPS monitor, so quite good color accuracy, not like the world best, right? But if you want to start off, amazing. You can get a 24 inch as well if you want, but I think 27 inch is kind of something that will last you for a long time 24 inch which is what i'm using over here you could use that one if you want to get it going but for like main work editing workstation 24 inch for me seems a little bit small to get all the estate on and there is one philips one over here that i found as well which is 27 inch monitor full hd as well but look at the price it's even cheaper and it looks so cool look at the bezels as well very small bezels so if you want something for that price this is probably one of the best monitors you can get so hopefully this will give you some ideas what to get for i'm not saying you know you should get these but i'm saying if i was you i'll be looking at these and this is what i'm looking at so um, definitely worth checking out hopefully this helped you to save some of these some of money and not going with something more expensive and you can get started with your mac mini do your work uh, for affordable prices or even some of the more professional prices to just enjoy the good apple experience remember all the links that i'm talking about are in the description and you can check them out below thanks very much guys for watching if you liked it hit that like button if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button because more content like this is coming out every single week stay tuned and I'll see you very soon. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.